Hello, 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 everyone. This is Ava with Stitching in the Interlake. How's everybody doing? Down there is Lilybell and Sydney, that turd. Anyway, um, and Jonah is hiding somewhere. Um, I apologize for the lateness of this video. I had done my video, uh, my German video earlier this morning. And then I got into, you know, that I had to make phone calls and I made my phyllo dough cinnamon rolls that weren't. <laughs> More of that. More of that coming. Um, yeah. So today is the 12th of December. Like, oh my gosh, really? Yep. It is zero degrees out there. And it is cloudy. And, um, but not rainy or anything. Not that I can see, but like, I guess the frost in that isn't really, it's kind of sort of coming out of the, out of the ground there on the road. And, uh, so anyway, um, yeah. And then I just spent an hour on the phone with PayPal and they have to get in touch with me. So it's, yeah, just one thing after another. So anyway, I decided to make my cinnamon phyllo pastry rolls. All I can say is, disaster. <laughs> what a disaster. But that's okay, because it was the very first time I've ever used it. I don't know what to really expect. Nothing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. All I know is that it didn't turn out. The phyllo pastry, puff pastry in other words, didn't puff. <laughs> so I had rolls and rolls and rolls of uh, phyllo pastry with cinnamon sugar in it. Mind you, it's still good. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, but, um, yeah, if anybody knows what I did wrong, please let me know. Yes, indeed, I did use um I kept it moist and yes I did um um you know use use margarine and that but I haven't got a clue <laughs> I used the whole thing though which is one thing I shouldn't do I shouldn't have it use so much of it I should have only used about half of the roll right, the stuff, and rolled it, you know, so they weren't so, so tightly packed. Maybe that's the problem. I don't know. Maybe it's how I baked it. I have no idea. But that's okay. They taste good anyways, even if they're not... <laughs> But I'm hoping that I can um, f figure out what I did wrong because I want to make baklava. And it's basically the same process. But it's, yeah, I don't, I, yeah. I wish I could figure out what I did wrong, what I did wrong. Like, it's just, I've never, I've never used it before. You know, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I did. I hope that's in the frame there. Um, somebody had mentioned that, um, you know, that I don't have it low enough like that. So, 
hopefully that's okay. Um, yeah. So anyways, <laughs> it was... <laughs> It's a good thing I don't have to do it for when somebody comes to visit. It's just that I would like to know how to do it. What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. I kept it moist. I kept it covered with a wet towel. I, um, I spread liberal amounts of butter on it, melted butter. And I have no <laughs> uh, Yeah, I got to watch some more videos. But, you know, nothing, nothing is so much fun as learning to cook or bake. You know, it's just... I've never done it before. So it certainly wasn't like the store-bought stuff. <laughs> I don't know what the heck I did. I don't know what I what I was supposed to do. I have no idea. So, and uh, the best before date wasn't until sometime in 2023. Like July or something. So I know it's good. But, um, yeah. So. So, yeah, I did my German video because I was way behind on that. And then I was going to, as soon as it had uploaded, because I can't do them. I can't do them back to back. It's just, I don't know. It doesn't go for me. You know, I have to wait until it loads. Then I can go in and delete it. And then I can make another one. So, I'm going to take my shower here in a couple of hours. Tomorrow, I'm going to be going over to... The rally for the hospital. At least it's going to be warmer and not like it was last week at minus 30. So, but I have to get gas first because I'm just, just above the E. And the one good thing is that it is warmer. So, it's, um. You know, and, and the gas station is just not even a half a kilometer here. 300 meters away. So, it's not far. But. Yeah. I have a few more recipes to try. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> I wonder how bad they will turn out. <laughs> well, I know I did something wrong. Because it's. I don't know if I put too many layers. And the next time. When I do it, I'm not going to make as many layers before I roll it. I did the whole thing because I thought, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. And so I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to use half the number of um, sheets of phyllo pastry. And maybe that will make a difference. I don't know. I have no idea. None. I have to go online and look and see. You know. <laughs> what did I do wrong with phyllo pastry? 
So I know that they will say, well, you didn't keep it moist enough. I did. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. Once I know what it is that I've done wrong and I can do better. Right. Because, you know, um, you all know Heinz 57 and WD-40. Well, you know how they got their name? How they got their numbers is because with Heinz 57, it took 57 tries to get it perfect. And WD-40, 39 tries didn't work. And the 40th one did. So that's how come it was WD-40. can't remember what WD stands for. I don't know. But it has something to do with all of that. And uh, there was somebody who said, I don't know who it was. They, they, he was trying to invent something. And I don't know if it was Michelangelo or who it was, Da Vinci, I don't know. And people were telling him, oh, give up on this. You you know, you've been trying this and it's been all wrong and you don't know how to do it. And he said, I know, you know, of, um, it said, you'll never get it right. And he said, well, uh, he said, I know of, say, a hundred ways that it was wrong. So I know not to do that again. So. Yep. Because I really want to make baklava. And <laughs> it's just funny. And um, I want to try a few other things. So maybe not tomorrow, but Wednesday I will make something. So yeah. Have any of you sat down and watched any of that? What do, what do they call them? Ginger and Winger. Which I think is perfect. Ginger is Harry and Winger is me, me again. And uh, apparently they've just... They have been burning their bridges... And, um, like somebody had yelled at, at, um, Harry there said, um, how do you, uh, do you feel like you've sold your family down the river for, for money? And, uh, somehow I think it is Miss Winger who's doing it, who's the, the one behind it. Oh, Harry, H, H, apparently she calls him. Um, you know, let's do this so that, you know, we can tell what our truth is, you know, which is their truth is not the truth. It is just their their spin on it. So, um, yeah, not, not good. I won't watch it. I just watch everybody else talking about it and what they think. It's not my thing, but apparently viewership at the very beginning was a lot. And now it's, down quite a bit and and the last three episodes drop on Thursday I think so 
everybody's waiting for this big bombshell. Well, I think the bombshell is, is that they sold their family. You know, they, 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 they took money instead of family. And those of us who are older, and maybe some of you younger ones, know that money can't buy you happiness. Money can't bring you the closeness that you need with family and friends, right? It's, uh, some people believe in buying the biggest and fanciest gift and, and like, you know, parents who would go out and, uh, give their, um, kids, you know, their daughter, uh, at 16, a uh, a, a beautiful sp sports car and, um, you know, but then what the kid really needs is that a parent's love and um, and knowing boundaries, right, and limitations. Because um, it's uh, to keep buying things for someone is just, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You know. I think I would rather have a gift that someone made and put their love and their energy into it than to... Um, you know, and it's from dollar store items, than to walk into um, Hudson's Bay or, or um, you know, some other big place or online and pay 10 times as much for a bobble that could just as easily get broken, you know, whereas a homemade gift will last and be there for years right so I guess it all depends on what you um, where you put your value I guess you know it's uh, it's not very good it's, uh, that's why, like, when we craft, when we do something, we stitch something for someone, and we put hours and hours and hours into it, and, you know, it's not shiny, it's not, um, um, you know, doesn't have... A big price tag to it in the sense of buying it at a say a jewelry store or fancy store right that it's oh my gosh now what it oh for Pete's sake no I'm no I'm not I'm not fighting with that I'm not fighting with that I am not fighting with that. Okay, this one should be okay. I got enough black anyways that I don't need to be fighting with it. So, but you know when you would make something, there was, it was so much more personal and so much more, you know, spent with love and care like I really have I have nothing of my grandmother's on either side nothing not a thing but I can tell you that if I would have had something where my grandmother's 
would have stitched um, um, a napkin or um, done something. Like I have a few items here from my grandfather that he had made um, during the war. That's my mother's father. And he had taken whatever it was that was there to make bits of furniture, like footstools. And I don't care that they were made with um, old wood, that whatever the case may be, you know, and old upholstery that was taken off of a sofa, you know, that on one end was burnt and, and that, and the other end was okay. To me, that, that makes it all the much more endearing because my grandfather made that, my opa, he made that. And he made that before the war or during the war. And that's what it means to me that there's um, that personal element to it. If you put a price tag on it, it would probably be like, say, $10 to get all the pieces for it. But that's that's not that's not the price tag that I look at. I look at it that my grandfather made made it with his very own hands, and I have that piece of him in what I've got. So. Yep. So tomorrow there, we've got the rally f with the hospital. There's a lot of speakers, 10 speakers, I think. But the um, health district, nobody from that is um, the, uh, the regional health authority. Um, they're not even sending anybody. But I told uh, Jocelyn, who is one of the organizers of it, I said, um, she, I told her, I, uh, well, I asked her, I said, well, is the health authority coming? Nope, nope, nope. I said, well, I can bet you anything there's going to be um, some spies in, in the crowd. They're going to listen to what people have to say. Because these people don't want to face the music of what they've done. It's like Christmas Vacation where um, Clark Griswold's boss, he didn't realize um, how people looked forward to getting a bonus and had budgeted so when they had that bonus. And when that bonus didn't show up, it really affected, you know. He said, I could see how the effect it had on people. And, um, and that's the thing. That's, that's the thing. They do it. You know, we are a country hospital. We're not very big, but it's important. We need this here. It's, uh, this is a valu valuable lifeline. I heard the other day that, I don't know when it was, last year or the year before, or whenever it was, about this gentleman that had gone to, I think it's the hospital here. Maybe it was a different hospital. And the doors were locked and nobody would let him in. 
and he kept trying and trying and trying. And then he went out to his car. No. And he was there and he dropped dead of a heart attack. Because they wouldn't let him in and look at him. Now, if the government thinks that's health care. Yeah. I know. I worked in the health care industry. Or health care field. I should say it's not an industry. It's a field. It's uh, not very good. We need doctors here. We only have one full-time and one part-time. And that's not enough. We need a complement of four or six different doctors here. Eriksdale Hospital used to be a, a big center. They had lots of births and deaths here and, you know, but now they don't even, you know, unless it's an absolute emergency where baby is coming like right this second, there's no, there's no baby born in uh, Ericsdale Hospital. And uh, it's the E.M. Crow Hospital. And um, this lady had um, raised money, funds, so that we would have a hospital here. This is a hub. We have, I don't know how many First Nations communities. I thought Jocelyn said, like, there's like, six or eight of them and you know we have farmers and hunters and um, fishermen and everything and everybody needs that you know there was one lady that um, here it was closed so then the ambulance was going to take her up to Ashern and Ashern was closed then they came back here. But they refused her. Then they uh, shipped her to, I think it was to Arburg. And Arburg was closed or refused. Then down to Stonewall, and Stonewall refused, and finally over to Selkirk. Like, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. So there should be m many more incentives to have doctors come and stay here. And if you have a good hospital and you have a good doctor, you know, be thankful for that. So, alrighty. It's hard to believe, you, you know, it's the 12th already. Like, oh my gosh. Do you realize at the end of next week, it's Christmas? It just boggles my mind. Just absolutely boggles my mind. So, and again, if somebody knows what I did wrong with my phyllo pastry, <laughs> please let me know. I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, I gotta go and clean up the kitchen, but. Yeah, so, um, and then I, I'm just going to continue here. And uh, so, we'll see how that goes. So, all right, everyone. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be well. May God bless you this day and every day. God loves you, and so do I. And so does Miss Twinkle Toes herself, Miss Lilybell, and Cindy, and Jonah, who's over there, I think, on the bed. So, thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me from my sins. Thank you for being there in my darkest and deepest moments. Thank you for loving me like you do. Thank you for caring enough for me that you would see that my sins would be forgiven. 
Jesus, you have done so much in my life. And I pray for your steady hand and your unending grace and mercies in my life. Um, for all my family, for all my friends, and that includes every one of you out there. I pray that prayer every single day and sometimes numbers of times a day. And it's always there in my mind. And I'm so grateful for everything that I have in my life, including all of you. So on that note, may you all have a wonderful afternoon. Doodle-littles, everybody.